Hey everyone, my name is Ryan, and as a lot of you already know, I am an English teacher, and I've been teaching for five years. I've had a lot of different jobs, and you're going to hear all about them in this video today. These are nine jobs that I have had since starting as an English teacher five years ago, and some honorable mentions at the end. Let's start off with the hardest job I have ever had as an English teacher. That was my first job. It was as an English teacher at a public school in Bangkok, Thailand. I was teaching 14 year olds and 16 year olds. Sometimes I was teaching classrooms full of 50, 55, 60 students at a time. The difficulty of balancing my work and my personal life was really tricky being a young guy in a new country with so so many experiences right uh teaching in thailand really set the tone for my career i knew right away that i was in the right trade and i wanted to stay as an english teacher at the same time teaching in thailand really taught me the difference between theory and practice. We learn all of these things in our TESOL certification, and then you see what it's like in real life. And applying this to the actual classroom could be really tough. But this was definitely the hardest job that I've ever had. The pay was good, but the hours were long. And sometimes I was expected to do things that weren't in my contract. If you want to know more about my experience in Thailand, then just check out this video right here. But long story short, your first job will mostly be one of the most difficult jobs you'll ever have. Turns out it was the most rewarding. And it also turns out that even though I got burnt out halfway through, I really was pushed to prove to myself that this is what I was born to do. Second hardest job, teaching a summer camp in Ireland. So I was working at a bar, right? One of the dishwashers at the back of the bar told me that she was learning English at a local school. So I thought, okay, I've already taught in Canada and Thailand. I have a TESOL. Why not apply? I applied. I got a job. The job was fantastic. The pay was excellent. But the kids... <laughs> And that experience taught me that I just don't really like teaching kids, and that's okay. We all have our own preferences as teachers. Now, I'm not completely against it. I know that there are some very well-behaved kids. In this specific situation, a lot of these kids were from Europe, continental Europe, and they came over to Ireland for a summer camp. So a lot of them were kind of, you know, amped up on sugar. They were really excited, very hyper. It's summertime for them. They're not around their parents. But some of those weeks were absolutely brutal. And this is really babysitting. Teenagers, some of them were absolutely brutal, trying to get through to them, trying to manage the class. But I have to say that this institution and my boss, uh, the, my principal, my coworkers were the best people I have ever worked with in my entire life and I could not be more appreciative to them for that so thank you to them very much and at the end of the day I mean this is an experience and it was one of the most rewarding experiences I've had in teaching third hardest job italki that's where I teach right now and a lot of my videos have been made based on italki and other language teaching platforms if you don't know italki it's one of the leading uh, language teaching platforms in the market right now and I've taught more than 3,500 lessons on italki you know 3,500 lessons you're gonna see all the best and the worst and I really got burnt out in the first couple months on italki encountered some very very difficult experiences and difficult students but it's pushed me to become a better teacher along the way. Number four, similar platform, a little bit different. Preply. Pre -pre -pre Preply is a platform on which I taught French and this was last May but at the time I was a teacher and I taught a lot of beginner level students. The teaching was actually very easy since I was teaching beginner level students and we were speaking just as much English as we were French. It was also such a cool experience for me to try to teach a different language and to watch the students actually absorb this information and to improve their knowledge. Issue with teaching on Preply was the pay right and getting nothing from trial lessons. I think that was really the deal breaker for me. From my perspective, when you're getting paid well and when you're getting treated well by the uh, employers, that could be a real, real plus. 
even though I think uh, preply is much better than italki in a lot of ways and much better than the other institutions at which I've taught in many ways, I think in this situation it's pegged at number four. Right, let's move on to number five. And this is teaching at the same place in Ireland that I was discussing before, but teaching adults. So this institution is a private school. They have people from Europe uh, come and learn there like a summer camp in the summer. But throughout the rest of the year, because it's such a seasonal like touristy town, throughout the rest of the year they have people uh, usually adults from South America who come in and who work in the town and while working they simultaneously study at the school I did a little bit of supply teaching with that being said with it being supply teaching I wasn't able to really solidify these long-term relationships with the students right it was kind of like quick in quick out and for that reason I feel like I didn't really have the motivation and the job satisfaction from not being able to really click with the students and see their progress over over time. Again, no reflection on the institution, best institution I've ever worked at, but it was just the nature of the job. It was also kind of odd because we were in this very small village, right? So a few of the people who I was teaching were actually friends at the same time. And to teach people who are kind of your friends who you go out with for drinks, it could kind of uh, disrupt the dynamics between the teacher and the student. Now, I don't think that's true right now after my experience on italki with a lot of my students who I consider equally to be friends. However, at the time, that's what it was like, potentially because I was a younger person and I had less experience. Job number six, that's at the college where I teach right now. This is the sixth hardest job or the the fourth easiest job that I've ever had. This job has a fantastic pay, so flexible. I teach these group classes. Some of the students aren't very motivated, but most of them are very motivated. It's online, it's uh, twice a week. I love the curriculum. It's just absolutely fantastic. Getting started in this institution, it was a little bit tricky with the onboarding. There were some problems with setting up the training and the scheduling of the training. There were also some issues with the clarity of what was expected from the teacher and how we are supposed to develop the curriculum, how we are supposed to deliver the curriculum, and how we are supposed to assess the students. Moving on to number seven, this is a college that I taught at over in Ireland. I was teaching IELTS preparation to asylum seekers. Small class, tightly knit, we had very good dynamics. One of the problems with this, it wasn't the pay, the pay was fantastic, it was actually the commute. I had to travel by bus maybe two hours each way and I know that's normal for a lot of people but sometimes the bus would be late so I actually had to catch a very early bus which left basically three and a half hours before I even started a class. So this was a little bit tricky for me. However, as I said, if the pay is good and the students are good and I like the material, then it bodes well. So this was one of the easiest jobs that I've ever had. Job number eight, this is my practicum in my C tessel. All right. So I didn't include the practicum from my TESOL because that was only a one week experience. You could learn more about that in the video I made about teaching in Thailand. But uh, this C TESOL, I did this at a Canadian university each semester. So I had a one year C TESOL program where I basically was enrolled in undergraduate, like fourth year courses. And all of them were based on methodology and based on uh, language teaching. And then I was able to get the C TESOL certificate. So part of that was a practicum. Come, right and we actually had a lot of choice in the matter of which placement we would get for our practicum so for me i wanted to teach academic english in the university settings how lucky was i i was placed to teach at this university where I was doing the CTASL and to actually be a teacher's assistant, a TA, for an EAP course or English for Academic Purposes. Even better, I was able to do this with one teacher, one level, the first semester and a different one the second semester. So I got that variety and diversity in there as well. Fantastic. I learned so much from those teachers. I think one of the downfalls of this is that I got so much experience and I was able to observe the teachers so much, but there wasn't quite enough being thrown into the deep end as uh, I think a lot of new teachers need. I wasn't a new teacher. This was after three years of teaching experience. The program was equally made specifically for teachers who are getting started or who have been teaching for just a few years. Assuming that I hadn't been teaching for this amount of time, I feel like more exposure to the actual classroom would have been better, right? Um, at the same time, I know that these students are paying 
thousands and thousands of dollars for this high quality Canadian university experience. So they don't really want uh, me to use them as a guinea pig too much, right? So basically my role was to go into breakout rooms and to kind of monitor the breakout rooms, do a little bit of teaching here or there. It gave me room to grow. I was really nervous when I was getting started because I was just thinking, oh my gosh, I am in the university settings. What's going to happen? It was a really good opportunity for me to learn from these teachers. It was also one of the easiest gigs that I've ever had. All right. And number nine, this is the easiest gig that I have ever had as an English teacher. And that was when I first returned from Thailand before I even touched down in Toronto I already had a job lined up at this private school I was to teach small group classes IELTS preparation ESL and 12th grade English some of the ESL students were had very little motivation and they would never show up like I had I had two classes which had two students in them. They did not show up for a month and a half straight. So I was getting paid to develop this curriculum, but basically the students weren't there. And I was getting paid for just sitting there in class basically for two months straight. What a life, right? Obviously, I didn't learn so much from this job. Um, it did allow me to get started with IELTS prep, and thankfully those students actually showed up to class. But even though this was my easiest job, I would say that it wasn't the most rewarding job because I didn't really learn too much from actually doing this job, partially due to the fact that the students didn't show up. However, I did learn a lot for curriculum development because I spent mo more of my time developing a curriculum and developing the hypothetical course for this new institution than I did actually teaching students. So, I mean, I've been teaching for five years and look at all the experience I've had. I've been very lucky. I've had more opportunities than I think I deserve, <laughs> but I've worked for them. I've worked for my luck. And I think that's a really important thing for young teachers to do, for inexperienced teachers to do. If you are given some sort of golden ticket and you feel like you don't completely uh, deserve it, well, work for it, right? And you will work your way to your future. There are just some honorable mentions right here, some other things that are teacher related, which I have done, which didn't quite make the list. So first of all, some informal tutoring in Thailand, um, also with some university students in Thailand as well. I do some teacher training as well. I actually sit down with teachers who want to get started online and I help to train them to get started. I also have uh, materials that I have developed myself. So I've been a curriculum developer and a content creator for you to access either for free or for a very, very low cost as a donation to me. And of course, I do some uh, teacher training. I've developed courses, which I actually sell online. And these are some little gigs that I'm going to be talking about in a future video about teacher side hustles and different gigs that you could do on the side. So now I want to hear from you out of those nine jobs that I've just spoken about and the honorable mentions. Would you like for me to make a video on any specific one of them to give you more information about it? Let me know. Give me a shout and I'll make a video about it. I'll give you more details. I'll tell you how I got started and how you could get started as well. So that's a wrap, folks. Thank you very much for watching. If any of you are interested in uh, teacher development or in professional development, check out the links downstairs in the box. And of course, hit the like and subscribe button for more tips and tricks for language teaching. Thank you as always. I appreciate your support. Keep studying, keep teaching, and keep smiling.